Hey guys, what's going on? This is Big Dave here. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of The Comic Book Guys. Today we are going to be talking about the Ninja Turtles and the last Ronin uh, comic series that they have going on right now. And maybe a little bit of the uh, Power Rangers and Ninja Turtles crossover. And we will talk about all that and a few other things and we'll see you guys in here in a bit. So... The uh, the Ninja Turtles, the Last Ronin. Uh, I picked up a what? Just straight to it, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I saw the uh, the issue for it uh, when I stopped at my local comic book shop, and I it was one of the uh, it never specifies throughout the entire first issue. It was the uh, it was the one of the turtles dressed up in a like complete black hoodie, black pants. Uh, black bandana across the eyes, but he was decked out in all of the weapons. Yeah, I've I've actually seen the the cover of it. I I was under the impression we we had this conversation. What was it yesterday? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah um, I was actually under the impression that it was Raphael because I think I actually looked it up and for some reason it said that it was supposed to be Raphael. There was a lot of speculation that it was going to be right. Uh, well, you know, because everybody likes Raphael. He's, right. he's the favorite. Right. Nobody likes any of the others. Uh, I'm, I'm kidding. Um, actually, they're all pretty cool in their own way. Right. But um, you said it was Michelangelo, right? Yeah. They. Uh, at spoiler. The, right, right. Spoilers for anybody wanting to read it. Uh, well, I guess, is it really a spoiler if they say it at the end of the first issue? Well, you said it, it doesn't really say anything until or throughout the entire first issue, but yeah. at the very, very end, like the last panel picture, they revealed who it was. It it was very interesting in the sense of a uh, like as you're the first issue started off with uh, the the turtle coming back to New York. Okay, he had he had been gone for a long time, mm -hmm. and it was not said at all where he was uh they go into that detail further into the second issue okay um but uh they he's coming back to new york he's been gone for a long time and it's clearly some time has passed mm -hmm. like everything's futuristic now there's a lot of neon lights uh there's a lot of uh, uh flying cars uh hover bikes and motorcycles uh he's coming back he swims through the sewers and uh as he's walking along, he's uh, talking to other people. Okay. Or at least some other people off, like, out of the picture are talking to him. Right. And it's pretty interesting. He's uh, giving himself, like, some banter between the people he's talking to. Um, but he is using, as he's sneaking into New York, he's running into uh, RoboCops. Like not, like the movie RoboCop? No, no, not the actual RoboCop. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just uh, android humans that have p taken up uh, as police. Okay, cool. Uh, to be completely honest, the uh, the island of Manhattan, it l honestly looks like the... Uh, uh, what is the name of that movie? Uh, oh, God, this is going to kill me. Fifth Element? No, no. Not the Fifth Element. The, uh, the movie where... Uh, the forget his actual name but they called him snake in the movie he had to go to the island of manhattan because oh, it was turned into a escape prison. from la thank you or escape from new york yeah that one um i knew what you meant <laughs> snake pliskin yeah uh russell kurt russell yeah 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 they uh the island looks a lot like that since we're talking about teenage mutant ninja turtle 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 mm -hmm. turtles i let's be really yeah. Anyway, since we're talking about turtles, mm. obviously Kurt Russell is going to be brought into this. I, I, <laughs> ah, sorry. Uh. Uh, so, <laughs> lost my whole train of thought. I'm so sorry. Anyway, it looks like Escape from New York. Yes. Uh, it's uh completely walled off. The bridges have been destroyed. Um, but people are actually still living there. It's like an actual society. Um, sure. As a uh, as they're going through the sewer or going through the sewers, he pops back out on the other side. Uh, he's talking about like, man, this brings back good memories. Uh, like, oh yeah, we had a lot of fun doing all this. I remember that. And they're just going back through like all the memories of them coming through New York and fighting the Foot Clan and uh, all the other mutants. Right. Uh, and as they are, uh, they arrive in New York, they realize how much has changed, mm -hmm. and they're like, well, let's see, we're looking for. I 
don't remember the kid's name. It's uh, Shredder's grandson. Okay. Um, they're looking for him specifically. And he's like, well, I'm assuming the biggest building at, with his name on is where we can find him. <laughs> and it it was uh, one of the voices off picture. So you mm-hmm. still, honest to God, cannot tell who is in or who is this last turtle here. Right. And as he's sneaking into the building, he's coming into contact with the... Uh, with the RoboCops as they're trying to take him down. Uh, he's using all of the weapons. Uh, my, uh, Donatello's staff has been kind of broken and shortened. Mm-hmm. So it's not a full staff, but a quarter staff now. It's like a Kempo stick. Yeah. Um, he has one of Leonardo's swords, and I believe one side from Raphael. Okay. And just one set of nunchucks from Michelangelo. Right. And he's using them all skillfully. Like, he was... He, I guess that's the whole thing. The whole point of him leaving was to train with all the weapons and eventually prepare himself for revenge to get on the uh, Shredder's grandson. Okay. So as he's uh, going into the building, he's breaking and entering. He's going through all the floors, taking down as many of the RoboCops as possible. A lot of the workers that have been hired on into the building, he is taking them down effortlessly. Okay. Um, then one of them, self, one of the RoboCops self-destructs and that catches him off guard. And he's like on the 45th floor and he breaks through the window mm-hmm. and jumps out and lands completely on a car, okay. completely crushing it. And he makes the comment. He's like, that should have killed me. <laughs> like he's completely confused. He doesn't understand why he's alive. Right. Um, and as he's trying to get his bearings back, he sees a, uh, bright purple, like, a chopper uh that's owned by a biker gang that's in a bar next to uh, okay okay it's uh it's bright neon purple and uh it's a hover bike and he steals it and he starts running away and one of the uh members of the biker gang comes out front and he says hey casey i think someone stole your bike ha that's awesome and a a woman walks out oh and it's a a chick who looks uh, like the Joker, kinda, mm-hmm. with but with a purple top hat and skull painted on her face. And she's like, "Whoever it was is so dead." <laughs> it was. It's pretty great. Uh, by the end, he sneaks back into the sewer after getting into an alleyway, finding a manhole. He goes down, and he starts uh, wandering. He's holding his holding his side. He's bleeding out. Of course. And then he finally stops, and he sets all of the headbands. Uh, from the turtles in front of them, mm-hmm. all four colors and every weapon from them, along with Splinter's journal that apparently he kept on his person at all times. Okay. He sets it down in front of him and he picks up Leo's sword and he's about to commit seppuku. And then he passes out. Okay. So as he's passed out, they're going through the memories of what has happened to the turtles and to Master Splinter. And it shows, it cuts back to a flashback of Casey and April O'Neil in their apartment trying to get ready for a dinner with all of them to come by Mm -hmm. and announce that they are engaged and getting married. Okay. And as they're waiting, they're like, man, they should have been here by now. They come bursting through the door. Splinter's got like a massive uh, bleeding wound on his shoulder and he's just bleeding out. They carry him over. They knock all the food off the table, set him down. They're all freaking out trying to figure out who could have done such a thing. And uh, that's when uh, Master Splinter hands uh, Leo a book. Mm -hmm. And it was his journal. He handed it to him and he's like, take care of each other. And he finally passes on. Right. And they're all trying to, like April and Casey are asking like, who did this? Who could have done this? And they're like, it was a Shirai. I think that's her name. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. Um, His uh, Shredder's daughter. Right. The yeah. one who took over after Shredder died. Right. Uh, they talk about the uh, the uh, the fact that the entire uh, treaty or the peace treaty that they had had been completely destroyed after Splinter got attacked and they were in their home. Right. So as Splinter dies, he hands the book to Leo. Um, they're all trying to figure out what to do. Um, Ma- uh, the last turtle wakes up after that memory, and he starts talking to the other four turtles or the other three that are sta- they are all standing around him sure. in his bed. Mm-hmm. They're all ghostly figures and they aren't, they still haven't revealed who is who. Right. And as they're all talking back and forth, uh, bantering, uh, 
they're like, I can't believe you were just going to end your life like that without claiming your revenge. He's like, well, I'm here. I'm trying. You guys all died at, with in vain. What do you want me to do? Right. And that's when April comes back into the room uh, that he woke up in a bed. He April comes in the room. She's much older, probably in like late 50s, early 60s. Sure. Missing a or having a robot arm and a robot leg. Okay. She walks in the room and says, Michelangelo, who are you talking to? And that's where the first issue ends. Nice. I was like, oh, it's Michelangelo. <laughs> I was like, it makes a lot more sense, I guess, because uh, Donatello would, uh, I guess, if you were to go by like who would be the better ninja, uh, Donatello would be too interested in like technology and gadgets Right. for the three of them. If the three of them were to die leaving him alive, he'd be so invested in that stuff, he would lose more of the skills as a ninja and rely too much on technology. Uh, yeah, cause you're right. Donatello would rely too much on technology. Mm. Raphael would honestly, he wouldn't have gone off to train. He would have just gone straight in head first balls to the wall. Right. I don't know if I can actually say that, but I just did. <laughs> um, and just attack and he's, a, he's he a male turtle. dead. Huh? <laughs> he said he's a male turtle. He would have been fun. Yeah. Um, Leo probably would have meditated on it for 17 years. Probably. So it does make, it actually does make a lot of sense that it would be Michelangelo that would want to get revenge and take the time to right. actually do it. Um, even though Michelangelo has been in the cartoons, the movies, um, any any kind of media iteration of Michelangelo, I'm not really sure too much about the comic books. Right. But um, in any media with Michelangelo, they've kind of, they made him kind of an idiot. Yeah. But even that, he would still be the one that actually takes the time mm -hmm. because he wants to get revenge on, you know, revenge right. for his brothers. Right. And his master splinter. Right. Um, but uh, there was one question that I had. What you said it's called the 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 series is called the Last Ronin, but mm -hmm. what's the actual comic book called? The Last Ronin. No, no, no. Is it just called the Last Ronin, or is it Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the Last Ronin. See, it can't possibly be Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. He's no longer a teenager. That's fair, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, putting logic into it, yeah, I guess that does. That does work. I but. mean, technically speaking, none of them are teenagers now, especially since they were created back in 1984. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, I mean, they're like middle-aged mutant ninja turtles. <laughs> <right>. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it's almost... Late 40s. Yeah, to <laughs> late 40s ninja... Well, not late, really? What? I'm in my mid-40s. I was born in the 70s. Oh, my bad. <laughs> Math. I'm not good at math. Math. Wasn't good at math. Math kills. Uh, gotta uh, be in math. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I can't add. <laughs> I think that would be more of a subtract. subtract. But, you know, that's cool. There you go. Uh, See, that just proved my point right there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not good. That's cool. It's cool. Um, so, yeah. No, I mean, that That actually sounds really interesting. Um, when When's the next uh, uh, episode? <laughs> when's the next um comic come out the uh the next issue issue I... thank you that was the word i was looking for <laughs> um, Apparently, you can't math i can't brain right it well i mean we're both tired it's been a rough couple of weeks we'll be good we'll figure it out it maybe the the third issue i'm not entirely sure um the i have looked for it for the past two weeks, I cannot find it. They've ended it already. I swear, if they've ended it, I'm gonna be pissed because I'm already invested. I actually enjoy this story. the uh, The second issue actually like went into the backstory of like how Raph died. It, really, it, it was exactly to a T how Raphael would have handled uh, the situation of Splinter dying. Wow. I I absolutely loved it. It was great uh, when uh, they finally revealed that it was Shirai who killed Splinter. Mm -hmm. um, everyone's looking around trying to make a plan and like trying to figure out what to do next. They uh, they finally asked, like, 
hey, where's Wrath? And Leo turns around and sees that the door is open. He goes, shit. <laughs> so, oh, what was it? Was it was it the cartoon or was it the TMNT movie where they had Shirai and it, I, I think it was Michelangelo who had a crush on her. Um, Or maybe it was Donatello. I was... No, in the past couple cartoon series, it's been Donatello. I was a Donatello has a crush on April O'Neil. Well, yeah, but the, one of them had a crush on on Shirai. It was a uh, Leo. Oh, it was Leo. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, the past couple cartoons and uh, what was that? Oh. That was probably my phone doing something. Oh, uh, I felt that all the way over here. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you're fine. I was like, what in the world? The uh. Leo in the past uh, movie or no the past couple of cartoon series he's actually been the one that has a uh, that has a crush on uh, Shirai which is very strange but not all about as strange as uh, Donatello having a crush on April. Yeah, well, I mean it, it is it, it it's strange. It really is very yeah. very strange. But uh, I mean. That you would think that they would do something to kind of rectify that in the comic book series, right? Of them having a crush on a human being. Yeah. Well, they are teenagers. Oh uh, yeah, I guess anybody does. Any any anybody would do. Right. As for the uh, to answer your question earlier about the third issue, I guess it came out May twenty sixth, and you just can't find it. I just can't find it. Okay. I'll have to. Go to the Mighty Lords of Amazon and try and find it there, maybe. Wait, it came out in May? Yeah. That means more More have issues. had to have come out by yeah. now. Yeah. Because it's what? It's only five. If It's only five issues long. The uh, I was going to say, it's, it's 2025 now, right? What? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> This year seems like it's been like it's lasted about seven. Uh, yeah, I guess that makes sense. So, the, you, uh, we, I mean, obviously, we're talking about TMNT, and you, mm-hmm. me- you mentioned, or I'm sorry, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, or as I always called them, the Ninja Turtles. Mm-hmm. I don't know why I just I always drop the Teenage Mutant, but I always did. So, and I a lot, of, I guess, a lot of people do that too. It makes sense, but. Uh, <clears throat> You said something about there was there was a uh, a Ninja Turtles Power Rangers crossover. Yes. So you and I got to talking about this last night, mm-hmm. where um, there was a Batman mm-hmm. um, Power Rangers crossover, but there's also a Batman Ninja Turtles crossover. Yes. Uh, they it was an animated movie. It actually was a comic book first. Was it really? Yes, it was a comic series first. Mm. Um, I think it was, I think it was a short-lived series as well. Right. But um, they they don't make these animated movies right based off of just you know somebody decided to do something right. Um, they well, I mean, I guess they do, but, but uh, they make these animated movies based off of uh, and, and a lot of times it's loosely based, right. but they base it off of a comic book, right? But the the animation for the turtles the animation for batman like batman's the old like dark or like light gray with the yellow bat symbol and you right. know um in the movie but it's still you know uh, whoa, whoa. tim tim conroy is the voice actor like the one that did the animated series uh i believe that's who it is uh let me but I mean, it doesn't matter. Right. Um, but uh, the animation for the turtles is more like the new cartoon, mm-hmm. where like some of them are just like Donatello's really weird, skinny looking. Yeah, they all have like uh, different physiques. Yeah, which I mean, that's it's cool if you think about it, right? But I don't know. I don't think I've ever really seen a skinny turtle. Unless it's a different type of turtle than the others. Right. But growing up in the 80s where, you know, when Ninja Turtles actually came out and they had a cartoon. Right. And everything. 
they've always been introduced as box turtles. Like all four of them were box right. turtles that got shoved down sewer, right, and mutated. Mm. They came into contact with the goo from the uh, right, the krang or whatever they were called. It was it. Well, it was it was uh, TCRI. The original, yeah, was yeah. TCRI. It was uh, just a chemical, yeah, dump, basically that they fell into, right, and they got mutated, and then. More, more, and more animals got mutated, or and then there were people that got mutated into animals. Right. So, it's kind of where it's kind of one of those. How is it that you've got turtles and a rat that mutated into kind of people? Right. But then you get people that mutate into kind of animal people. Right. That that made little sense to me, like Bebop and Rocksteady. Yeah. Uh, they, uh, that was the, uh, the interesting thing about the live action movie. Yeah. About the second one, they kind of put in a, like, sort of, uh, explanation for that, that every human in their DNA has, like, a sort of trait that links back to a specific animal. Huh. And for Bebop and Rocksteady, when they were injected with the ooze that turned the turtles into what they were. Uh, for them, it latched onto a rhinoceros and a uh, warthog. Oh, okay. So they added a little bit of like that uh, explanation to the uh, to the idea of why it did it. I mean, it, that makes sense because if you look, if you remember, I, like I don't know if you watched the the original cartoon at all, uh, where they're they're. You know, they had their their beaks were like above down around their mouth. Cutesy face looking. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they all had like letters on their belts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They uh, I saw a few episodes when I was a kid, but I sure. never actually watched the actual TV show. Well, they actually showed Bebop and Rocksteady as people before they got mutated. Yeah. And they didn't really look much different hmm. from when they were people to when they were a warthog and a, and a rhino. Right. So. Easier design wise, yeah, I guess so. So, like I said, I, that makes that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, and f- like in the live action movie, it kind of they did kind of like have the personalities, I guess, mm-hmm. that fit those animals. Yeah, uh, I mean, then to be honest, like for uh, which one is Rocksteady? He's the rhino, isn't he? Uh, is yeah, yeah. Rocksteady is the rhino. Bebop is a warhog. Um. For Rocksteady, they had Seamus play him, the wrestler. Yeah, and I was like, yeah, I could, I could see that dude Absolutely. taking people down as a rhino. That's yeah. awesome. I, I, I'm gonna have to watch that movie again. I don't remember them being in that. Maybe, maybe the second one wasn't just, just wasn't that memorable to me. <laughs> the the second one wasn't great. I, I mean, they kind of just shat on shit. Uh, Shredder. <laughs> I almost called him Shitter. <laughs> well. <laughs> I mean, they, like, Shredder in the first live action movie, he was a bit more, uh, like, he had a bit more of a role to play. Right. He was the main villain of the first movie. In the second one, the second movie, they just made it all about Krang. And right. that Shredder was trying to help him. And he would, in return, he would get help taking over New York. Mm-hmm. And the Krang is just like, Nah. <laughs> yeah. So, anyway, back to the Batman yeah. animated uh, mm-hmm. movie. The, the the Ninja Turtles versus Batman, or yeah. Batman versus Ninja Turtles, or whatever it is. It's one of the two. Yeah. Um, it was actually kind of cool. Like, the, the very beginning of it, it shows um, somebody's robbing Wayne Tech. Yeah. And Batman, of course, shows up, because, well, you know, Bruce Wayne and Batman are best buddies, and... Batman has to protect Bruce Wayne's investments. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Um, Without going into uh, all the, the, like, I've never seen Batman and Bruce Wayne in the same room. Well, you've never seen me and Batman in the same room together either. So. This is also true. Um, but anyway, uh, so it ends up being Shredder is the one. Yeah. That's robbing Wayne Tech. Like, he didn't send his Foot Clan in. He's just doing it himself. Right. And then Batman shows up. You know, Batman's a badass. Right. So he goes to fight Shredder. Mm. And proceeds to lose horribly against Shredder. Mm. Like, it, it, it does showcase how badass Shredder actually is. Yeah. 
in that in that cartoon. Yeah. Um, now I, again, like I said, I don't know what the the comic book was. Mm. Uh, I I never actually read it. I did see the right. movie. I wasn't overly impressed with the movie. I think it was because of the animation over the story. Right. That's usually how it kind of goes. Yeah. So, I mean, if you can get past the animation and just be like, story, story, story. Right. Then I think you're going to be, you'll be pleasantly surprised. Or ple- right. But uh, Batman is like, he leaves basically licking his wounds, mm-hmm. you know, and then. He goes to his Batmobile, and there's four turtles standing around his Batmobile. Right. And even beaten and bruised and everything, he takes on all four turtles. And he is actually doing really well. He whoops them. Oh, yeah. They're, and I think they made a... Uh, Michael Angel make, uh, makes a comment. He's like, we're four turtles in the night in an alleyway. I don't. I don't think anything's weirder than a dude dressed up as a bat yeah <laughs> yeah so i mean it, again it was it was a good movie it was it yeah. was it, but it i do like the fact that after you know thinking about it for a while i like the fact that it does showcase how badass shredder is mm. how badass batman is mm. how the turtles need to learn more right <laughs> clearly um so i mean it, it's okay it's it's not bad yeah it's uh I've actually been meaning to look into it uh, and actually watch it myself. Uh, I just haven't had an opportunity, but I am very interested in actually watching it. Um, I, I'll let you borrow it at some point. All right, cool. The The funny thing is I actually didn't know that the Ninja Turtles were part of the DC. Uh, They're not. Uh, tech. I, oh, yeah, I guess you're right. They're not. You, you they're, were telling me about yeah, this a minute ago. Uh, they're, they're actually owned by Mirage Studios, which is the publication. Yeah. Um, so, and that, like they, that's where they started and that's where they still are. Right. So yeah, they do have like, they do a lot of crossovers. Mirage yeah. does a lot of crossovers with other, mm. cause, um, I don't think power Rangers is in the DCU or uh, DC universe. Uh, I they're cause they're Saban. I believe they've done a few crossovers, but not a whole lot to really be worth mentioning. Other than the Batman one, and well, uh, you said that they had a Ninja Turtles, yeah, uh, Power Rangers crossover. Yeah, tell us, tell, tell a little bit about that one. They, uh, so the the first issue that I of it that I found, and it was the only one I could find. Funny enough, it was actually in black and white. Okay. Um, they are the Ninja Turtles are like going downtown. Oh, hold on a second. If if, if anybody's curious about it when Dave said funny enough it was because uh, we had a conversation earlier off air Ninja Turtles actually started out as a black and white comic if you Mm -hmm. didn't know that Um, you couldn't tell which turtle was which other than their weapons right Um, and then later on when they finally actually became color colorized uh, all the turtles wore red bandanas as opposed to your you know the signature red blue yellow and purple which is very strange still <clears throat> but again you still couldn't tell which one was which because of the the different bandanas or the, right. the only way you could tell which one was which is because of their their weapons right um there was actually a crossover event on one of the ninja turtle cartoons mm-hmm. where they met the turtles from the 1980s mm-hmm. they met the turtles from the old black and white comics yeah where the turtles from the old black and white comics were super serious and by the way if you haven't ever actually picked up one of the black and white comics mm-hmm. you think the last ronin is a brutal comic mm. <laughs> nope oh jesus uh there i mean it was like in the 1980s to bypass all of the murder <laughs> oh, Jesus. that some of the turtles uh, committed, right. <laughs> they made the Foot Clan mostly robots. Oh, thank God. So <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Jesus Christ, the turtles actually used to murder people. Oh, yeah. No, no. Now they're a kid's was, cartoon. Yeah. The Foot Clan, I mean, they, they, they didn't care. They killed 
Right. They, they were, they, it was brutal. They are, they're, they were the true definition of ninja. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, the, tur- or the Power Rangers comic book, they had, a. Uh, different two different versions of it that you could find and one was fully colorized and Mm. one was in black and white okay um the series or the comic that i found was the only one i could find of the crossover because i think they started to slowly teeter that one out because i believe that one is done okay um and it was a it was just the black the first issue of that series in black and white and it started off with actually the I actually spoke wrong. It actually starts off with the Power Rangers um, in street clothes walking around. I do not remember where the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers are from. Angel Grove. Uh, thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, it shows them walking around and wondering where. Uh, oh, God. What is his name? Uh, Tyler, the the Green Ranger. <laughs> I don't remember his name. Uh, they're asking Tommy. Where, Tommy. Thank you. Oh, Jesus. Uh, Why do I know this stuff? Because <laughs> uh, the Power Rangers are awesome. Okay, fair. The original Mighty Morphin are still cool. Um, Yeah, pretty much anything after the original. Eh, it kind of to me. Yeah. It, it was all over the place. You had the, the race car ones, the Galaxy Rangers, the Jungle Rangers, uh, Samurai, Ninja, Pirates. My all-time favorite. Pirates? Pi- yeah. Pirate the Ranger. Pirate Ranger? Really? Yeah. They had cutlasses and pistols. It was really weird. <laughs> My favorite all-time ranger, I believe, was with the uh, the galaxy ones. He's the Texas Ranger. <laughs> I'm I, not making that. I, I'm up. sorry if 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 one of the villains didn't touch one of the pirates, pirate rangers, Zords, backside, and the pirate rangers say, "Arr, you touched me, booty." I, I don't want to see it. The I'm sure there has been a joke like that before. Um, I don't know what the Zords were for the pirate one, but uh, my guess is stupid. Um, my guess <laughs> my guess is based on like legitimate pirate ships. Probably. If they're if they were animals, I I can only imagine like parrot, monkey, yeah. eagle, dog, cat, tsunami, <laughs> shark. Yeah. Um, so Kraken. Cra- oh, that might have been the that might have been their Green Ranger or something maybe. Uh, no, that was their Drunk Ranger because Kraken is a really tasty. Oh yeah. Uh, what is that rum? I believe it's a rum. Yeah. yeah. I I've only had it once. I don't actually like rum. I don't like hard liquor at all. But uh, a mutual friend of ours made me try it once and i was like okay i could (laughs) probably get behind this until i start drinking too much of it right uh so the going back to the comic the uh the comic starts out with the rangers wondering where tommy is and that uh the red ranger he's like oh um i think he said he had something he had to do with family in new york okay so uh it they're like, oh, well, I hope he's being safe. Like, if something happens, we're going to be screwed without him. So it cuts to... So Tommy's the only one that can do anything. Gotcha. I, I mean, he is the, <laughs> he is the Green Ranger. He's the White Ranger now. Oh, yeah, that's right. Green Ranger's when he was evil. Yeah. Um. So he ha- Well, I mean, the Dragon Zord is all powerful. It can become its own Megazord. That was the coolest thing in, to me as a kid. Yeah. Yeah, now it's a Pokezord. No, you're right. It looks like a Pokemon. It does kind of look like a Pokemon. The So it cuts to downtown New York, and the Foot Clan are uh, going over their heist as they're, that they're about to pull off. Mm-hmm. They're getting something important, and the Ninja Turtles crash the party. Sure. They show up to put a stop to it, and one of the Foot Clan members, just an average Joe... Just comes up to Raphael and beats his ass. Really? Yeah, he just puts him in his place. And even the three turtles are like, did you just get your butt whooped by average Joe over here? What happened? <laughs> He's like, I don't know who this dude is, but that's not an average Joe. And uh, it's revealed that it's actually Tommy in the Under- outfit. Undercover. Yeah. Um, and at the final end of the issue, they find Tommy uh, on a rooftop making a phone call. Uh, to back to the Rangers back home, uh, they were asking how he was doing in New York. He's like, "Oh, I'm doing fine. I'm looking for some, uh, looking for something right now. Um, I'll be home soon." And it, the Rangers or the the Turtles find him on the rooftop. And they're like, 
So who exactly are you? Because you are way too skilled to be part of to be running with the Foot Clan, right? And uh, that's when he pulls out his uh, sword flute <laughs> and, tur- <laughs> and turns into the White Ranger. Yeah, right. <laughs> and uh, he morphs into his uh, White Ranger suit, and they start fighting. Mm-hmm. And he's actually holding his own against the uh, the four turtles. Okay. And just when the turtles start to get the upper hand, the rest of the Rangers showed up. And they start fighting the turtles as a group. And they, like, the turtles are so confused. <laughs> oh, yeah. They're like, why? Like, we thought we were color-coded. What is going on? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and then it cuts to Shredder and Shirai standing on a rooftop overwatching this entire fight. Mm-hmm. And uh, Shirai's like, Master, did you know that he was part of the Ranger? He's like, oh, yeah, I knew. I'm just going to see where this goes. Oh, wow. So, it's... Uh, it's got an. It had an interesting startup, and it had a very. Uh, it has a very interesting story for potential that I actually do want to go back and try and find the rest of the issues to read. Um, there is one section in the story that I do not know the context behind it, mm-hmm. but it was posted everywhere: Twitter, Facebook, uh, everywhere that involved comic books. It was the four turtles, uh, in the red blue black and yellow ranger outfits interesting they uh were given the mighty morphing coins and uh power suits and they morphed into the power rangers with their weapons it was really cool and it it was a very interesting uh photo i was like i really need to look at this now yeah um so since we're talking about turtles power rangers Mm -hmm. we talked about batman earlier a little bit yeah i i i want to tell you about um the uh, Batman Power Rangers crossover. Okay. I What I've read of it. Oh, okay. And honestly, I found this on Facebook. Mm. And I laughed so hard. <laughs> so basically it starts out um, in the Power Rangers universe. Right. Okay. So it, it, it doesn't actually start out in Batman's universe. It starts out in the Power Rangers universe. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I don't remember all of their names, so please forgive. But uh, the, the Black Ranger was looking for something and ends up falling through this dimensional portal. <laughs> and he ends up showing up in Gotham City at night. Mm-hmm. Well, what happens when a costume person, because, you know, he's in full gear. Right. Shows up in Gotham City at night. Batman's uh, there. Yeah, I was say Plain Batman immedi- immediately shows up. Yes. So Batman's there. Sees costume person. Mm. All in dark. Batman doesn't doesn't really stop to have a conversation. Right. He just goes and proceeds to try to, to beat the brakes off of this kid. Oh, Jesus. And he does. He beats the brakes off of him. Well, meanwhile, Mm. the other Rangers are trying to figure out where their friend is, Mm. and they show up. And Batman is all alone against, what is it, five Rangers? Uh, Red, blue, yellow, green, or white, uh, pink. I don't know if Tommy was there. So I think it was all the original Rangers. So Five would be the original. Yeah. So, again... It's Batman versus the Power Rangers. Right. Yeah, they lose. They're losing. They're yeah. losing bad. Yeah. Well, it's Batman. It's Batman. Yeah. Until Kimberly gets her Zord and steals the Batmobile. Yeah. Just picks it up with her pterodactyl and flies away. And Batman's just like, huh? <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> and, and literally, that's all I read of it. And it, I just like I was <laughs> I was actually at work when I read this. And I'm so glad that when I read this at work, it was third shift and no one else was around me because I was cackling. <laughs> it was so funny. Just the idea of the uh, Kimberly's the Pink Ranger, isn't she? Uh, yes. Uh, just the idea of the Pink Ranger Zord uh, stealing the Batmobile. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it, it just picked it up and just went. <laughs> And Batman, like, just stands there. Like, I mean, I guess I could get my plane, but who's going to drive the car back? (laughs) 
So it was just kind of like it, it was almost like so whoever made this comic just drew the single most befuddled face that they could figure out and right. gave it to Batman. So <laughs> it's just a, <laughs> it's just the what in the what? hey <laughs> I just got my car stolen by a metal pterodactyl. I mean, to be fair, he had his wheel stolen by another Robin, so that's how he found yeah. Jason Todd. <laughs> Uh, Ow. Jason or Tim? Uh, Jason. Tim. Uh, I believe. I'm pretty sure it was Tim. Tim Drake. Was it Tim Drake? It was Tim Drake. What was Jason Todd? Was he? I don't remember. I I'm it. very. I'm very not remembery. I say I could have sworn it was a. Uh... Jason, it could have been. I, could, I could be wrong. I, I, I mean, it could be. Uh, it, it wasn't Damien because, you know, he found Damien at his doorstep because Talia sent him home. Yeah. I mean. He just showed up. Hello, father. Hello, father. What? Crap. I knew it had to happen at some point. It's uh, the new Batman game that they've got coming out. Uh, I have another one? Um, they, I'm not entirely sure what it's called, but... Uh, in the trailer, they've revealed uh, Batman sending a transmission to the uh, to the four of them uh, being Robin, Damian, uh, or Nightwing, Damian Wayne, Robin, uh, Red, uh, the Red Hood, uh, Jason Todd, and mm. uh, Batgirl, oh. uh, saying that the in the in the message he's like, if you are getting this, it means that I'm dead. And this automatic transmission will be sent to the uh, to all of you that uh, after the uh, drives from the Batcave have been completely wiped and have been completely destroyed. Uh, we can't. He's like Gotham City will need its protectors more than ever now that I'm gone, mm -hmm. and we can't exactly rely on the GCPD ever since Jim died. Hmm. So and it just it cuts. So it doesn't the, it doesn't follow the Arkham games then. No, it doesn't seem like it. That's good because. At the very end of the last Arkham game, if you haven't beaten it, if you haven't played it and beaten it and want to play it and beat it, I haven't played it and beat it. I just saw the end of it. So I've I've played it and beaten it. Um, I have not completed everything. Okay. So basically at the end, he retires, mm -hmm. blows up Wayne Manor yep. after he walks into it. Assumed dead, mm -hmm. and the Red Hood took over. Yep. Uh, there is a. Uh, there's also an explosion. Uh, uh, it shows a little, uh, little cutscene where two thugs look up at a uh, the corner of a building, mm -hmm. and just a figure that looks like Batman standing there. And then he opens his cape and just immediately rush with the the Batman outfit added in with the fear toxin from Scarecrow. Ooh. Meat. Yeah, it makes him look like a giant winged bat demon. Man bat. Man bat's actually a villain in that game. Oh sweet. Yeah, he's uh, <laughs> uh, my me and my dad have actually made jokes about this because uh, I have the way you deal with uh man bat is he's flying around mm -hmm. and he's you have to catch him in the air and like stab him with like a um a drug that knocks him out. It's like a specific drug strong enough to knock out Man Bat, but you have to tackle him out of the air. He doesn't do anything. He's just flying around, screaming, just not doing anything. And Dad's like, so what is he doing exactly? I was like, he's not doing anything. He's like, he's just doing Man Bat shit, and you're knocking him out of the air. What? Why you got to do that? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I was like, what exactly constitutes this Man Bat shit? And he's like, flying around and screaming. Yeah. He's just trying to do Man Bat shit, and yeah. you knocked him out of the air. <laughs> that's the, I, the way you first run into him though it it scared the shit out of me it was a uh, i was trying to climb up a wall or grapple up a wall and as i got to the top he peeks his head over in your face mm -hmm. and screams at you and runs <laughs> like there's no warning for it whatsoever <laughs> so as i'm like i was like all right i gotta get up to the top of this building Zzz, just ah, and i was like oh shit <laughs> I fell through the controller. <laughs> it scared the crap out of me. And I went dookie. I'll be back. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. So the uh, 
the Ninja Turtles uh, versus the uh, the Power Rangers uh, seems like a really good crossover with uh, the fighting, and it, it's honestly hard to tell who exactly is the villain other than Shredder. Obviously, someone's got to be part of this with the Power Rangers, but it's I'm not exactly sure who it is from their uh, list long list of villains. It's got to be Rita Repulsa. If it's the Mighty Morphin, it's got to be. Yeah. Or Lord Zed. One of the two. Mm-hmm. Um, or both. Or both. As for the uh, the last Ronin, their whole thing was just with Shredder's grandson taking over the Foot Clan. Like, and it, it does show a few like panels of him as an adult. Or I, I guess I should say either... No, he's an adult. He's got to be. He's like in his early 20s. Um, he's fighting members of the Foot Clan. And he's telling them about how weak they are. Like, you guys are so weak. I need you to actually fight me like you're trying to kill me. Give me an actual fight. Oh, are you talking about Shredder's grandson? Yeah. Um, and uh, he's. it showed Michelangelo in uh, actually talking to him for a few uh, for a few panels in the first issue. And uh, he's like, I thought I got rid of all of you vermin. <laughs> like, It's like, oh, wow. <laughs> I was like, man, two panels and I already hate this kid. <laughs> I was uh so basically they they made him Damian Wayne. Essentially, yeah. Uh with longer hair and a much more aggressive attitude. He gets more aggressive? Oh yeah. Ooh. As soon as uh as soon as he found out that Michelangelo escaped, he uh-huh. started throwing shit around like he went full Kylo Ren temper tantrum. Oh, that's so sad. Breaking stuff, throwing stuff around, beating the crap out of the random Foot Clan members that were in the room with him at the time. <laughs> Never go Kylo Ren full tem- temper tantrum. It's, uh... They... It's, uh... It's pretty wild. Um, but, uh... I really need to... I really need to hunt down the rest of those issues so I can actually read into that, along with the, uh... Power Rangers now, issues. I'll give you a place that, uh, you can check out um, mm. after we get off the air, mm. um, if you're interested in going that far to take a look. Oh, I'm very inter- Uh, you said very far. Uh, it's not very far. It's in Indianapolis. That's not so bad. Okay. Um, it also depends on where you go and normally. So, I mean, I, I could literally just be giving you the same place that you normally go. Mm-hmm. So, um, but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, I'm really looking forward to reading the rest of these comics. Yeah, uh, I mean, I'd I'd like to I'd like to read them myself, or yeah. at least you know, have you regale us with the tales of how it goes. <laughs> I will definitely uh, try to talk about them a bit more, uh, maybe next time uh, if I can find more issues. Okay, sounds good. Um, so. Uh, yeah. Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning into this episode of the Comic Book Guys. Uh. If you guys uh, aren't a fan already, please join us on our Discord page uh, and look at the website. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Ring that bell for any of our updates that we got on Geek Public Radio. Please check out the other shows like uh, Sunday Night Madness, GPR, and uh, Criminal Fix. And we will see you guys next time. <laughs>